We hope your Christmas time is passing peacefully. Even during Christmas holidays, we bring you three captivating news that Astronautics has brought us. We commence with the record-breaking reusability of the first stages of Falcon rockets. However, the record holder will not be utilized for another launch. In the second topic, we'll examine how engineers are readying the lower segments of the solid rocket boosters of the SLS launch vehicle for the Artemis II mission. Finally, we take a look at the launch of Falcon 9 with a duo of German military satellites. At 5.33 UTC on December 23rd, nine Merlin rocket engines ignited on SLC-40 launch pad at Cape Canaveral, propelling the Falcon 9 launch vehicle into the night sky. During the Starlink 6-32 mission, a total of 23 second-generation Starlink mini-satellites, each weighing approximately 800 kilograms, were launched into orbit. Their destination is approximately 550 kilometers above the Earth's surface. At first glance, there was nothing significant about the mission involving Starlink satellites. However, upon closer inspection, it proved to be a record-breaking endeavor. The first stage flew for the 19th time, with B-1058 being the oldest stage SpaceX had been using. It made its debut in May 2020 during the DM-2 test mission of the Crew Dragon spacecraft. In addition to the two astronauts aboard during its inaugural mission, this first stage transported more than 860 satellites, with a cumulative mass of over 260 metric tons in a mere three and a half years. Such figures are impressive, even by the standards of many countries. The record-breaking 19th landing of the first stage B-1058 occurred on the Just Read the Instructions autonomous drone ship before proceeding to Port Canaveral. However, it was struck by powerful gusts of wind along the way, resulting in the stage tipping over. Therefore, it will not be used again for a 20th time. It is worth noting that the newer first stages boast enhanced landing legs, which can counterbalance the tilt thus significantly mitigating the issue. The Artemis II mission, involving a four-person crew flyby of the Moon in the Orion spacecraft, is still approximately 12 months away. However, preparations are already in progress. This video was captured at the Rotation, Processing and Surge Facility, RPSF, at the Kennedy Space Center. Engineers from Exploration Ground Systems inspected the two aft exit cones of the solid rocket boosters, SRBs, of the SLS launch vehicle and, upon confirmation of their satisfactory condition, attached them to the two aft segments. The aft exit cones serve a dual purpose. They not only facilitate higher thrust, but also shield the extended part of the segment from heat during takeoff. Prior to the commencement of the assembly of the launch vehicle, all of these and other activities must be undertaken. For example, Engineers have to attach adapters to the SRBs for their future connection to the central stage of the SLS. Moreover, SRBs will need an installation of heat protection cover and sensors. Upon completion of these, the lower stage stacks of the solid rocket boosters will be finished.
Once the mobile launching platform returns to the vertical assembly building, the stacking of the SRBs will start on it. The Artemis II mission is still planned for late 2024, though a delay to 2025 is likely. On December 24th at 1311 Universal Time, another Falcon 9 launch occurred from the SLC-4E launch pad at Vandenberg Space Force Base in California. Two satellites, SA-RAW or SARA-2 and 3, were launched into polar orbit. Both satellites will orbit in formation with the SARA-1 satellite deployed the last year. While SARA-1 is designated as active transmitting radar signals, the other two are passive, designed to detect waves reflected from the Earth's surface. When the first and second stages separated, the beautiful atmospheric phenomenon, known as the Falcon Nebula, emerged in the sky. Its origin is in the interaction of first and second stage gases in the upper atmosphere. And landing zone four is not too stage far away. Since the SARA satellites are dedicated to military operations, data pertaining to the orbit parameters were not broadcast publicly. Nevertheless, the duo of two-ton satellites were heading to a low Earth orbit, thus enabling the first stage to return to the launch site. The first stage was utilized for the eighth time, touching down nicely on the concrete pad of LZ-4. Being situated in close proximity to the SLC-4E launch pad, a picturesque composite photograph was able to be captured. Thank you for your attention to today's episode of Spaceflight News. We are delighted in your interest in space news, and to ensure you do not miss future episodes, kindly consider subscribing to our channel. Additionally, you can find other interesting news on our profile on Social Network X, formerly known as Twitter. The link can be found in the video description.